Hello, my name is Keith Rucker. So I thought I'd do a little interesting video today, and this is kind of, I guess you'd say, maybe in response to a video series that Mr. Pete just did, Tuplicane. Uh, Mr. Pete uh, 22 or 222 has a channel, real interesting stuff. I always like watching to see what Mr. Pete's up to. But he just did a series of videos talking about making a lead hammer. And uh, he went through a really neat process of actually uh, making a pattern, uh, then making a mold, and then uh, basically going through the whole process of casting a lead hammer. And having done pattern making work and having done some casting work in brass and aluminum and then make, sending patterns off to get in cast iron, um, you know, I've got a little bit of experience doing that kind of stuff and I got a tremendous respect for what he did. But when I saw all the effort that he went into making his uh, lead hammer, uh, I couldn't help but kind of laugh because uh, I had a much easier way of doing it, uh, the same thing, and, and that is to use this little, uh, this little hammer mold uh, right here. Uh, and this is something that I bought, I don't know, it's probably been seven or eight years ago. I think I was at a uh, tool meet where they had a bunch of old tools and stuff, and this was sitting on the table. I knew what it was. I'd actually have, have made these hammers before and had used one of these before and I picked it up and it's just kind of been sitting in my garage. I've never actually made a hammer out of it before, but I saw his video and then also uh, this past week, uh, one of the comments on on my channel, I was working on the, the Oliver fence and I was tapping it with a metal hammer and I actually had to go in there and file it a little bit because I had raised an edge on it. And someone made a comment and said, you need to make a lead hammer, get a lead hammer to do that. And I said, you know, you're right. Uh, I need a lead hammer. So time has come. I'm going to make a lead hammer. I'm going to use my little uh, my little mold here uh, to do it. So a little bit about these molds. These molds have been around for many, many years. They've been made by a lot of different companies. This one right here uh, says uh, Charles H. Field, Providence, Rhode Island on it, uh, who was the maker of it. And uh, I, I looked online. I couldn't find any information, uh, or, or at least I'm still being in business. Uh, but I, I happen to know because I have, have looked recently and, and, and seen it, but in the McMaster car catalog, you can still order these. You can order uh, these, these uh, hammer molds. They come in various sizes from, I think, about a one pound up to about a six pound hammer. Uh, this one here has a three on it, which I'm assuming is for a three pound hammer. It looks a little bit small, but lead is kind of heavy. So that's probably about right. It's probably about a three pound hammer. So I went on to the McMaster car catalog and I actually ordered a hammer handle. Uh, the handle for one of these hammers and uh, these hammers handles you can you can purchase uh, you don't have to use one of these hammers you can you do like mr pete did in his and just use a piece of pipe you might have to turn it down to match this diameter to go in this particular mold uh, but you can use a piece of piece of pipe in fact when i have done hammer handles handles before hammer heads before we always use pipe it works fine but you know i said hey i'm going to order one of these nice handles uh, it's got a plastic handle on here that kind of fits your hand good and um, you know this this quite honestly it cost me about 20 bucks um, which is uh, probably a little bit higher than what I like to pay I'm not saying it's not worth that but uh, it's got a cast uh, stem on it and again a, a rubber or plastic handle on here uh, which will hold up very well I think at some point in time I'm going to try making some custom handles uh, turning the top part out of a piece of steel and maybe epoxying on and then turning on my wood lathe a uh, wooden handle uh, and then shaping it to, to fit. I think that'd make a very nice looking hammer and uh, I might do that as a future project. But for just for a quick and dirty uh, project here, I just ordered a handle from McMaster Car. This one is made by Cook Hammer Company Incorporated. Uh, like I said, they're still in business. You can get the molds. Uh, the handle for this uh, uh, mold is, is it's not an exact Fit, but I think it'll work. It's just a little bit oversized. Also, if you look on this one, you kind of have a diamond shape or square shape here. It'd be diamond shaped the way it goes into the mold uh, recess here. And when you get the, the molds from Cook, I think that they're actually diamond shaped so that it fits in the mold. It can't turn. It, it kind of positions it, whereas my mold is round. But like I said, it's just a little bit oversized round. Uh, I'm just going to hit it on the grinder, kind of grind that down and get it where it fits this real well and uh, we're gonna cast us a handle uh, using this little hammer mold. The idea behind these are is that, you know, obviously a lead hammer, being a soft blow hammer, is gonna deform, it's going to quite honestly tear up real quick, and you don't wanna have to order a new hammer every time you mess your head up. So the idea was, was you would buy one of these little molds, and every time you needed your hammer refreshed, you would just melt the lead 
off of the old hammer and re-pour it. Maybe you have to add a little bit more lead back in there, but you would just re-pour these hand, hand, um, hammers and recycle the handle. So you'd only buy the handle once and you could keep making new heads to go on that handle over time. Really interesting idea. And, uh, and judging by the number of these uh, molds that are still around, I think it was a pretty popular idea and probably even still today. Like I said, you can still order these and get these. I think the three pound uh, mold here, it costs about 75 bucks for a brand new one in the McMaster car catalog. And like I said, they go up to about a six pound hammer. And of course, the bigger ones uh, get more expensive. But you know, if you're using these a lot, it's probably a good investment for a shop to be able to do something like this. So I'm gonna go hit this up on the grinder and uh, kind of get this shaped up and uh, we'll pour us a, a lead hammer. All right, I got you zoomed in a little bit closer here where you can maybe see this a little bit better. So all I did was uh, right in here, this stem area, this was just a little bit oversized to fit this mold. So I just took it on the grinder. It didn't take two or three minutes. And you know, I've got this where now that fits up into this mold very nicely. And when you shut the mold, it seals up all the way around it. So that hammer handle is now ready to go in this mold. And you can see how that goes in there. It fits in. The top is kind of uh, uh, at an angle there and you got some pockets in here and that's to keep that head from being able to come off of the handle. It's gonna be captured in there when you uh, cast the metal around it. And also these indentions in here will keep it from rotating within that hammer head. So uh, the top up here is very cleverly designed to do that. So anyway, this is ready to go again and on the mold that's really made for this handle. I think that this was probably diamond shaped that this would fit into rather than round. Uh, but there's no reason why this won't work. So um, originally on this, there was probably some type of clamp that held this together. Uh, when I got it, it didn't have a clamp. So I'm just going to take a C clamp. Uh, we'll C clamp this together. And uh, I'm probably also going to go to a little bit extra step. This is an old mold. It's been around. I've never used it. I have used these before and had a problem where you leak lead all around the seams all the way around it. So I think what I'm going to do, since I have some Babbitt Rite that I use as damming material for, for my uh, pouring Babbitt Barons, I think I'm just going to put some damming material around the seam, seal it up real good, and that way I won't have to worry about it uh, spilling lead everywhere. That's probably an extra effort that I don't have to do, but hey, I don't like spilling hot metal all over me. I'm going to go to the extra effort. All right, we have the uh, mold ready to go here. Uh, as you can see, when you put the handle in here, it kind of gives you a handle to hold it by. And uh, the idea here is you just melt the lead into this pot. And from what I've been read up on these, when the pot is about full, you've got enough lead. And then you just tilt it back and let the uh, lead pour into the hammerhead. So I've got a bar of lead here. This is just some scrap lead that was actually melted down. I think they used a piece of channel iron and just cast a, a piece here. And I'm just going to take the torch and we're just going to melt some lead uh, into this pot. When the pot gets full, we'll cast us a handle and I uh, go from there. So I'm going to put on some good gloves here as well as put on a face shield just in case there's any splatter. Let's uh, open it up. I didn't take my own advice. I don't think it quite filled all the way up. So we'll see what we got here.
Yep, we're just shy of having enough lead in there. So, ah, no problem. Uh, we're just gonna melt that lead back out and um, go through this process again. Okay, second attempt here. Um, I decided to forego putting the uh, Babbitt right around the outside. It looked like it had sealed up pretty good. So uh, we're just gonna take a chance and uh, I think we'll be fine. That's the way it's designed to work. I was just being cautious, uh, but I melted the uh, Babbitt out. I just melted it over in another ladle. Actually, I melted this ladle and put it over in this ladle. We'll dump it back over here to uh, uh, and remelt it now. So let's give this a second chance here. All right, we're gonna let that cool down for just a couple of minutes and uh, see what we got. We've let this sit now for, I don't know, about five minutes or so. So um, let's see what she looks like. Not the prettiest pour I've ever seen, but for a lead hammer that's gonna get beat up, I think it's just fine. So. I'll take a file and just knock those rough spots out. And uh, I think we've got something we can use. All right, I just took a little rasp file here and just uh, kind of cleaned it up a little bit on the outside. And uh, I think we got a very respectable lead hammer here now. Just ready to go to town. Uh, again, you know, this is a nice setup because uh, when my head gets mauled up, I just melt it out and uh, recast a new one, uh, and the handle's reusable. And again, I think in a future video series, I'm going to make a machine a handle, put a nice wood handle on some of these, and uh, maybe make up a few of them. Uh, I think it'd make a, a really nice looking hammer. Uh, I like the, the, the feel of this plastic grip hammer, but uh, I just, I, I like the feel of a wood handle better. So uh, anyway, and I, I like this a lot better than just using pipe because you do have at least a handle that is molded to fit your hand. But uh, I think we can do better out of wood. So maybe that'll be a video down the road to machining some stems and uh, making a nice handle to pour some real nice uh, uh, hammers. So there you go, guys. The quick, easy way of making a lead hammer uh, using a hammer mold. And uh, that'll make a nice addition to the toolbox. And uh, in all my restoration work, I'm always needing a Nomar hammer. Uh, you know, I see Adam using a chunk of lead to knock things on a face plate. You know, this might work good for that as well. Not quite as much mass, I think, as he has in that hammer, but uh, uh, I'll probably, it'll probably get used for a lot of things around the shop. So there you go. If anybody out there would like to have one of these uh, poured, uh, if you'll purchase one of these handles and maybe uh, send me some lead along in a box, uh, I'll be glad to cast up some of these and send them out to folks. Uh, they're kind of fun to make. Uh, so, yeah, uh, if you're interested, let me know. Thank you for watching, and thank you to my many subscribers out there.